Hello everybody and welcome back to another video by Blissful Techno Health. Welcome to my lesson two video in my how to use a computer with Windows 11 for beginners series. I'm going to be picking up where I left off in lesson one. To start this lesson, um, let's go ahead and go into more detail on using the start menu. The start menu is down here as we talked about in the uh, other video in the, on your taskbar on the bottom left the little windows symbol and if you hover over it you can see you know it says start so if you click on the start menu with your left click it's gonna bring up the start menu here for us to look at now this start menu in windows 11 is similar to the one in windows 10 but also different to the one in windows 10 now to go over everything on the start menu let's look at the top here you can see you have type here to search okay that is the same search as you find down here as we covered in the last video the search icon it's the same thing so if I come up here and click in here it actually brings me over to the search icons menu so it's the same thing it's just more than one way there's just more than one way to get to that that search area so they gave you the spot down here on the taskbar and a spot up here on the start menu Below the search area, you have an All Apps button. <clears throat> if you click on this All Apps button, this will actually give you an alphabetical list of all the programs that you can access on the computer. And as you can tell, there's quite a few even on a freshly installed computer. Anytime you install a program, it's going to put that here in this list. Now that's important to know because if you install a new program and you forget to create a shortcut anywhere else, you can always come into this all apps section and find the program. In Windows 7, it used to be when you clicked on the start menu down here in the bottom left, you had an all programs um, button on the bottom left of your start menu. Windows 10 was similar, but they call it all apps. Well, Windows 11 is the same, they call it all apps, but they've moved it up here. Same thing, different location. Underneath the all apps, we have all of our pinned icons. Now, a pinned icon is basically the same thing as a desktop shortcut like you would see over here. But instead, it's in the start menu. They call them pinned when you move them here as a shortcut. You can modify which icons you have pinned in your start menu. If I right click on any of these icons, it will give me a menu and I can unpin it from start if I do not want it here. So let's say I don't want the Disney Plus app on here, pinned, I can just click on unpin from start and it's gone. If I want it back, I can come back to all apps, find that app, right click on it here, and pin it to start. And that'll move it back. Granted, it's gonna move it to a different location. It's gonna move it to the bottom. As you can see here, I've got two pages of pinned apps. You can have even more depending on how many you want to have pinned. On top of that, you can move your pinned icons around. So if I click and hold on a pinned icon, I can drag it and move it to a different location. So I can click on clock, hold it, drag it up, and move it where I want. This way you can prioritize the apps that you have um, according to you know probably how much you would use the app. Like let's say if I use Facebook all the time, you're probably gonna wanna have it in the number one slot so you can organize and just keep things nice and tidy. Granted, this is all personal preference. I personally don't actually use the start menu very much. I mostly use my desktop icons, but I'm kinda old school. I've been using computers since DOS and when we moved into Windows 95, it was always mostly dealing with shortcuts on the desktop. But a lot of people do like to use the start menu and the pinned apps. So it's totally optional. But that's a quick review of the pinned apps section in the start menu. I hope that, that all made sense. Underneath you're gonna see recommended um, file use. Basically it's like recently used files or things that they think that you're gonna wanna use. Um, you can click more to see a, a larger list of that. So, I mean, it's here if you need it. 
if you if you have a program that you know you've accessed recently but you can't find the icon for whatever reason and you don't want to look in all apps typically you can find it here or if there is a file and etc and etc so that covers the start menu pretty much as a whole for now something else that I would like to cover is when to double click when to single click and when to right click with your mouse any icons you're gonna have or shortcuts that you're gonna have on your desktop here you have to double click in order to open up these program shortcuts okay if I just click on it once it's just gonna highlight it and select it so in order to open these I have to double click that is different from the start menu icons the start menu icons I can I only have to single click so if I single click this clock icon it brings it up if I, have, if I had a shortcut for that clock icon on the desktop, I would have to double click in order to bring it up. The other place that you have to double click is whenever you have your file explorer opened. Your file explorer is this manila folder down here, file explorer. This actually lets you access all of the different files in the computer. We won't go into that detail now, but just know that anytime you're in File Explorer, you also have to double click in order to bring up the shortcut or the menu. So that's just really important to know. Now, also you need to be aware or notice that you have a right click option. Right clicking on any icon will give you a menu with different options to modify the or view properties of the selected icon. So left clicking to select, double left click to open, right click for a different menu with different options. As you can see here, I could pin this to start. I could open the file location, which means it would open the program's file location in the file explorer, as we showed down here. I can right click, show more options, and get the older view that we used to get on the other versions of Windows to see properties. I can copy, cut. Um, open file location like you said like we said earlier and etc you can also right click and just open it this way instead of left double left clicking same in the start menu as I talked earlier you can right click to get different options to unpin these or pin these you also have options here that are similar as when they're on the desktop like run as administrator pin you can pin it to the taskbar you can pull up the app settings uninstall it from here and etc so Left clicking is to select, right clicking is for more options or for an extra menu for those extra options. Something else in this video that I would like to cover is the fact that you do have your clock down here in the bottom right hand corner. I reviewed that we, yes we have a clock here in the last video, but we're going to talk a little more in detail about this clock. If I left click on the time, it will actually bring up a calendar and also show me notifications. The calendar, you can adjust which month you're looking at, etc, etc. You can s select the day that you're looking at. But most importantly, you can actually right click on the time and you'll see you have an adjust date and time option here with the gear, meaning it's in the settings options. So if I click on this, you can modify and adjust your date and time. So if your time is off or incorrect, you can change that here and make it correct. You can see the current time here is 1027 AM on Sunday, Monday 29th of 2022. We can have the time set automatically. I have mine turned off. We can set the adjust for daylight saving time automatically. I have mine turned on. Time zone, I'm in mountain time. Or you can just set it here to manual. Granted, if you have it set to automatic, you cannot set it manually. It's automatically set. So uncheck, make sure it's turned off. Now you can change it manually. So this is the area in which you can change and modify your current time and etc. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, when I right click, it says adjust date and time and it shows a little gear. That little gear means it's in a menu called the settings menu. Now you can access that settings menu via the start button. If I come to start, you will have a shortcut for settings somewhere in your pinned icons on your start menu. 
If for some reason you do not have the settings menu listed or the icon, you can go to all apps and it is alphabetical order. So you can scroll down until you get to the S's, find settings, and here's your settings as well. I would recommend keeping this pinned in your start menu because it is something that you will probably have to access from time to time. So you may you want to make sure you right click on that and pin it to your start menu. If you cannot find it or you just want to take a different route, you can also use the search option by clicking search and typing settings and it will show that best match right here. Let's go ahead and access the settings. There is a lot that can be done in settings. A lot of important things that you may need to use from time to time. The most important one you're going to see is on the very bottom. This is your Windows Update Settings menu. In here, you're going to see new updates constantly available. It is important to keep your computer up to date for the latest security updates and stability updates. So, as you can see here, I already have an update available, even though I just ran updates the other day. We're not going to run them now for the sake of the video. You can also just click on check for updates if it's not showing any and see if any more pop up. So here you have Windows Update under settings. At the very top you have system, display, sound, notifications, power and battery storage, etc. A lot of different settings. We're not going to go over this in great detail. You've got blue, uh, Bluetooth and devices, network and internet uh, for connecting to your wireless, etc. Personalization can be nice. You can change your theme. For example, if I click on this one here, it'll change the entire theme and uh, the color theme, the background, the colors, etc. I'll go ahead and go back to this one for now. Um, app management in here, all the apps that you have installed, the accounts that you have on the computer, time and language, which can take you to the date and time that, that brought us down to that it brought us to from earlier over here etc etc so settings is very important because there are going to be times when you need to pop over into settings and play with some of your um, settings manually especially that windows update so that covers all of the material for lesson two we reviewed the start menu where all the apps are all the pin different apps how to move them around how to unpin apps we reviewed left clicking versus right clicking and double clicking and when it's appropriate. We reviewed the time, how to adjust the date and time. And we also reviewed the settings menu briefly. We'll go into more detail on the settings later, but for now, just be aware that it's there and what's in the settings menu. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video has been informational and helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you don't miss out on my further uploads for these Windows 10, this Windows 10 series for beginners. You guys have a great and beautiful day. We'll see you next time.